God. Somebody say hallelujah this morning. Let the people who know the language of God say hallelujah. hallelujah. You know, it, it's always good, you know, to be introduced in the church, but one of the things that I admire is that it is good to be sometimes, we have few, but you're true. They're there, but plenty and they're empty. <laughs> Amen? This morning, I look forward to sharing the word of God with you. Can we just stand quickly? I just want to get this. Thank you, Pastor Amar and the team. The worship was not for you. The worship was for God. But the word today is for you. Hallelujah. And then you got to make a, dis a very distinct understanding. The word of God is a good seed. Amen. So lift your hand and says, good seed. Is going to find good ground. Put your hands on your heart and says, My heart is a good ground. The good seed is going to find good ground. And that good seed is going to produce a good tree. Lift your hand and says, I am a good tree. I am planted by the rivers of living water. Lift your hand again, says, I am a good tree. And I will bear good fruits in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I will bear good fruits. And the fruit shall remain. And it shall glorify God. Now I want you to lift your hand and say, Father, I thank you this morning that I am in the right place. Say, I am in the right place. Say it loudly. Say, I am in the right place. I am with the right people. I have the right spirit, and I shall receive the word of God for my season. Somebody shout hallelujah this morning. Give him praise and glory, hallelujah. Amen and amen. Because of the importance of the word of God. You know, there is, the Bible says, man shall not live by, but by very good. You're very. But do you know that not everything in the Bible, sorry, you could be seated. Not everything in the Bible came out from God's mouth. Oh, it is God's word, but it's not from God's mouth. So you have to now know what is coming out from God's mouth. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that what? Proceeded from the mouth of God. Because in this Bible, we have the record of Pharaoh talking. Amen. We got a record of, of, of men who were blind talking stuff. But when you hear from God's mouth, it changes your life. Amen. But I want to say something that I have to shake you a little bit. Because my sister had the message in her spirit. She said, release the lion. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. So the scripture, before there was a Bible, there was a person called the word. You agree with me? Before there was a Bible, a book, there was the man called the word. And the word was made flesh. And it did what? So I met some people and they tell me they're studying the word. So I thought to myself they were studying, they were studying the letter, but the letter will kill you. You got to study the spirit. And there is where life is. Amen. This morning, let's go straight into the word and let's see what God has for us. Are you ready? Amen. amen. Glory to God. Turn with me, if you can, to the book of Ephesians chapter 3, because I'm going to walk a little bit and talk, because that's how I feel free. Can I be free this morning? Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is. Amen. In the scripture, in Ephesians chapter 3, Paul is writing, and he's giving the church the revelation that he was experienced that he had received from the Lord, and I'm reading for, if you are with me, from verse 14 
onwards. For this cause, from verse 14 of Ephesians chapter 3. Are we there? Okay, that's a matter. I'll read it. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Let me just put a plug there. You are not sitting next to a stranger. You are sitting with family. Amen. If we can understand that the family, amen, is not only what you share with your bloodstream, but what you share in your spirit, amen. Are there family? Good morning, the family of God. Can you wave your hand and say, hey, 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 I am in the family, hallelujah. And the family, amen, when there is unity, in the Christian community, then we will build our immunity. Because a lot of people, they are sick. Amen. Not within or the outside, but they are sick on the inside. We need to have the understanding we are God's family. Amen. So when you don't see somebody in the house of the Lord, my father's house, or when you don't see your family for a while, do you feel good? You feel good? You see somebody's missing at a dinner table. You feel good? You see somebody's not supposed to, when you look at your prepare your moms and dad, you don't see your kids. Are you, you get worried. You should, we must pray for one another when we don't see them. Amen. We should look out for one another. Come on. Hallelujah. So let's go. I'm, I'm the one, that's a little detour. Hallelujah. And it says here in the scriptures, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with the might by his spirit in the inner man. I'm loving this. Amen. Hallelujah. That... Christ may dwell in your where? Where is Christ dwelling? That Christ may dwell in your hearts. How? By what? By what? By what? So you got to, don't come to church and meet him. You better come with him. Amen. Hallelujah. You see. By faith, we have Christ dwelling in our hearts. Amen. This is beautiful. Hallelujah. This is a revelation that needs to be a part of a Christian's daily living in order to be conscious that you are not just alone in this world. You've got someone living inside of you that is greater than the world. Hallelujah. And you got to operate with the knowledge that he's not just there as a bystander. He's there as your father. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. The Bible says by faith, he reveals this, that you may, that, that he dwells in your heart, that you may be rooted and grounded in love, that you may be able, this is all about you. This is not just sitting and saying, well, I don't know what's going on. I don't know how. Let me tell you something, my friend. I want to let you know, your spiritual education will give you elevation. Amen. You want to come out of something? Educate your prayer life. Amen. Sometimes we go to God and say, oh God, I don't know what's going on. Father, I don't know how this thing goes. Let's talk about a Christian who knows. He says, Father, I know that in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess. And Father, I know that I don't care how big this is. I know you will deliver me. I know it is done. I give you thanks. Hallelujah. That's what faith people do. Somebody say hallelujah. We speak the victory, we do not run to God in fear. We come to God in faith. Hallelujah. We receive the revelation in our tribulation. So we have jubilation and celebration. Amen. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. 
you receive it even before it's finished. I declare to you this morning that you are, you got to see yourself the way God sees you. When you look at the scriptures, that's how God sees you. When you know that how God sees you, then you walk in that reality. Amen. The Bible says in a scripture here, let's going to go into it. It says, and to know the love of of Christ, which passeth what? Passeth knowledge. That you might be what? Filled with all the what? Fullness of God. And to, and on no one to him that is? That's the most popular scripture verse. And no one to him that is able to do what? If you speak that word over your life, you're going to say, Now unto him that is able to do what? To do what? Exceedingly abundant. I met, I met a brother, good, good young man, and uh, pastoring, and he came to me and says, Pastor, I don't know what's wrong. I think I'm praying the wrong prayer. I don't know how to pray again. I fasted, and nothing is happening. Have you ever been in that position? You prayed all the prayers you can. You fast all you can. You give all you can. And he says, nothing is happening. And I looked at him and I said, let's look at the scripture and let's see what it says. Now unto him who is able to do what? Exceedingly, abundantly, more than your good what? I say, my brother, you are putting everything pin on how you pray and not how he answers. Come on. Hallelujah. You got to understand that it's not about your prayer and how you fast. It's his goodness that have you here today. Amen. Come on, give him praise and glory. Hallelujah. It is because of his goodness. It is because of his faithfulness. Stop making it about you and make it about him. Amen. Come on, lift your hand and say hallelujah. Don't you come to church and say, it's a bless me service and a heal me service. It is a service. Wouldn't it be one of the best service if nobody have an agenda here and just want to praise God? <laughs> Wouldn't it be a service? Unto the king, when you don't have to study about my family and who do me this, you just say, all I came, Lord, is to glorify your name. Wouldn't it be a blessed service? Come on, hallelujah. Take your eyes off yourself and put your eyes on him, amen. Am I talking to anybody here this morning? Hallelujah. Because when you mark the perfect man, you have the victory, hallelujah. This couple of day, weeks ago, and I, had, I came in and I knew God was going to do something. So I had to understand that when you are going on a mission for God, somebody arrives. Amen. But you do not have to be devil conscious, sin conscious, or people conscious. You have to be God conscious. You got to keep your mind on the Lord, somebody. Amen. What is man? The Bible says, what is man in the scriptures? Because man, people say things like this, which is not good. They say, it's only, I'm only human. Have you had people say that? It's human. And that's, but to God, you are the highest form of creation on the planet. Come on, I'm not hearing you. Your cerebral mentality, your brain functions is higher than the animals. Amen. You were made in the image and likeness of God. So my point is, you got to understand what you possess. So here's a scripture that has, would not leave me, because I was going to preach something completely different, but I sat there and it just came to me and the Lord said, speak to my people. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we may ask or think, According to the power that worketh in heaven, in the pastor, 
In the anointing, where is this power working? If there's anybody in control, let's put that scripture up because I'm going to remain, for, I want that to be a visual. I want you to help me there in that scripture verse. Anybody? Ephesians chapter 3. The power that worketh in us. Hallelujah. It's coming up. The power that worketh where? Say it again. Say it like you believe it. Believe that you are not weak. Say, I have power working in me. The power that worketh in us. Many of us, God gave us, God gave us, God gave us the power. He says, I have not given you a spirit of fear. I have given you a spirit of what? And of what? And of what? You got something from God, but somehow or the other, we took another something and have problems. Amen. Sister, I want you to know this. And I want you to know this very carefully. The power that worketh in what? Say it again. Lift your hand and says, power is working in me. Say, I'm plugged into the Holy Spirit. The Father in me is doing the work. Lift your hand and says, the Father in me is organizing my head. He's talking to me. He's walking with me. There is power working in us. Amen. The first point of understanding, working. How many of you like your body to be working well? Amen. Amen. Lift your hand say hallelujah. hallelujah. You see the phone, if you keep using your phone, it has a something called, it, it loses power and it gets what? Drained. I like that word. It gets, some of you go straight to the word dead. It loses, it loses even so. There are little warning signs that comes up and says, uh, your phone needs charging low. Some of you know what I'm talking about because you are low in the spirit. You need charging. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. We charge you up. Hallelujah. You mean when you came up in the altar here, you know what? You came to be plugged in. Amen. Hallelujah. So, the power that worked where? In us. The number one point of understanding, and I don't have much time to get this in your spirit. The power that worked in how many of you there is power in your mouth? Some of you have good power and bad power. <laughs> but you got power. Say, say power in my mouth. Say power in my voice. When I talk to God's people, I speak under the anointing of Christ. There is power in your voice. What your physical voice says, your inner ear picks up. A lot of people don't know there is a relationship between your mouth and your ears in your brain. You have to understand what you say outwardly, it internalizes inside. Amen. That's why it's good to recite the word of God. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Lift your hand and says, I will live and not die. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above only. I have resurrection power living in me, dwelling in me. I am so blessed. I am. The righteousness of God. Everything I touch has to prosper. Lift your hand. Hallelujah. I am a blessing. Hallelujah. I am who he says I am. I can do what he says I can do. I have what he says I can have. I am the child of the king. I'm not looking to be blessed. I am blessed. I don't get you. I, we, we have this kind of tendency. We buy a car and we go in the car and say, Pastor, come and bless the car. And then all of a sudden, somebody steal the car and they say, Pastor, you didn't do a good blessing. <laughs> or the car get into an accident and say, Pastor, didn't. So I want to change that. I want a blessed man driving the car. Amen. When you are blessed, the car will be blessed. Amen. Come on, if you say hallelujah. 
When you are blessed, whatever you put your hand to do will prosper. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. A lot of us, we have, you know, I, I can make you laugh. I can do all that, but I want to get a word in you. Say the power that worketh in us. The Bible says yeah, the word power has two meanings. It, it, it has one of the words that comes from the word authority. Amen. So we have the dunamis power, which is the actual raw power of God to work miracles. Amen. And then we have the power of authority. Hallelujah. So first, before I go, just put your hands on your mouth and say, I got power on my tongue. When I speak, things happen. Say, good things happen. Say, blessed things happen. Say, I speak with faith. I see beyond the natural. I speak life, Jesus, over my family. Come on, hallelujah. This week, you know, you know, people do this, and I don't know how you have seen it. They pray and they bless their food, and then they complain how bad the food tastes. <laughs> have you ever met people like that? I've seen people do it, and this is another one. Somebody came to me and said, Pastor, let me tell you something. Every single time I do the wash, the rain comes <laughs> and we wet it up. And what you expect is what you receive. And there's another guy, I'm standing on a line, going in the bank, and I'm waiting. So it's a little long line, and the guy turns to me suddenly out of nowhere. He turns back at me. He said, you want to see something? I said, what? He says, listen, just before my turn come, they will close the thing. <laughs> he said, the teller will close and go. I said, what? <laughs> Guess what? Just before he goes, the teller closes. He turns and says, you see? <laughs> Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. But the power that worketh in us is not for evil, but for good. Amen. How many are like that? Expecting good. Are expecting bad rather than good. I know my God is take bad and make it good. Amen. I know my God, what is meant for evil, God is turning it around. Amen. I know my God has turned my scars into stars. Wave your hand and say hallelujah. I know. That he knows, you know that one of the songs that you have here, he is famous for. Let him do what he's famous for, amen. He know how to shut the mouth of lions, amen. The power of your ears is important. Somebody say amen. amen. Say listening is important. Because some of us, they, they, time again, I've got to do stories when I can't do the much. I have to cut it very, com compress it. There was a... In the flea market, a guy was selling dolls. And in the process of selling dolls, he had two identical dolls at his stall. And one of it was for $1 and the other was going for $1,000. Yeah? So to the average eye, you'll pass the stall and stop because you see a doll is for a dollar and the other is for a $1,000. So they said, hey, so I think you're making a mistake. These dolls are identical. And he says, no, they're not. He says, really? So let me show you an experiment. And some people were gathered. And he took some oil. And the doll that was worth $1, he poured the oil in one of the air. And it went into one air and came out the other. <laughs> Then he took the same oil and he poured it into the doll that was worth $1,000. And the oil went into the air and went into the inside and activated the doll. And the doll started walking and singing and talking and moving. Amen. I don't have to preach anymore. You all know which value you are, right? <laughs> you all know who you are, right? I'm, I think I'm talking to the $1,000 doll. Amen. Don't let it go in one ear and come out the other. Let the word of God, there's power when the word enters your heart. Amen. Amen. Give him praise and glory. Hallelujah. When the word of God enters your heart, fear will leave. Amen. And faith will arise. Amen. Amen. Ooh, come on. Hallelujah. 
There's somebody right now going to put your hand on your ear and say, Father, I am a thousand dollar door. I'm listening to you. I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. I don't know hearing the neighbor. I don't hear what the neighbor is saying. I don't hear what the boss is saying. I hear what my father is saying. He's saying it is going to be okay. I'm not hearing what the doctor is saying. I'm hearing what a great physician is saying. Hallelujah. Give me praise and glory. You got to understand that he's not listening. To your condition, you're listening to the physician. Amen. Hallelujah. The great Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Are we being blessed here? Wave your hand if you're getting blessed. Put your hands in the air and says, My hands are blessed. There's power in me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Christ. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 1, this is the mystery that we have to understand. Because a lot of the time, people go to church and they say, well, I say a prayer and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that is bad, but that's the limitation you have. You say a prayer and wait to go to heaven, so you struggle between earth and heaven. And you live with the mentality that God has abandoned me. It's up to me to work it out. I don't know how I'm going to do this. And you walk in that darkness because you don't understand. If you walk in the light as he is in the light, you have fellowship with him. What is the light? The light is walking into intelligence and knowledge of God. Amen. You don't stumble when you walk. Amen. You are not alone. Lift your hands. Say amen. amen. Say I'm not alone. alone. Say it again. Say it like you believe it. Amen. I have angels backing me up. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're getting to the point of the air. So we do the bless my air. So somebody say, my ears are blessed. Put your hands on your eyes. Say, my eyes are blessed. Put your hands on your mouth. Say, my mouth is blessed. Put your hands on your heart and say, my heart is blessed. So your value, some of you listening, and I want to tell you, say, say there is power in hearing the right thing. There's power in saying the right thing. And there's power in believing the right thing. Are you there with me? Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. Many, many times the Christian, uh, I am a third generation Christian. And I, um, my grandmother and my grandparents were one of the first Christians, and they had to go through a lot of persecution in order to able to practice their faith. Amen. And people would not have allowed them to come out, but whom God, when God has a plan for you, no man can stop that. And my parents were Christians, and amen, and I'm here. Amen. But the point important is, there is another power that I want to share with you, and I want you to know it's called the power of forgiveness. Because some of you could be in Christianity and have not forgiven. Am I talking to anybody here? Jesus healed by the power of his word. Listen carefully. But what word did he say? He said to some people, before they were healed, he says, your sins are forgiven. Amen. He says, your sins, pick up your bed and walk. You are forgiven. The moment he says that, they were healed. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Some of us, we have become so conscious of our mistakes. And you know what? The devil loves fishing in you. And he just go in your mind and start giving you flashbacks on where you are and how bad you are. And how, you know, when I, when I go through that, let me tell you, I will tell you something. Anytime the devil put flashback on me, look what I do. I'm lifting my hand. I say, Father... I'm so glad of the finished work of Christ. I'm so blessed by the blood of Jesus uh, that you have been able to wash away my sin, oh God. Uh, and I am so happy that you love me and you took me out of that. And now I'm here praising you. Uh, and I know that there's so much great things. So what I do is I turn it around on my thought. Amen. I program my mind to speak God's word in my flashbacks. Could you all say hallelujah? I am a new creation. Hallelujah. But the thing about majority, and I'm not saying it's you, I'm just saying the majority of Christianity, we, we do not understand the problem of the finished work of Christ. So we keep on looking at where we have come and how far we have reached and how far he has come. Amen. He grows in you. Amen. So there is the power of forgiveness. Say amen. Come on.
there was two friends, and they were good school friends. Uh, they were, can I have some water, please? A bottle of water. <laughs> so two school friends. Just give me. <clears throat> and they went to school together and had great times together. And as they were together in life, they grew up and they were enjoying each other's company. They went to write an exam, so in your mind eyes. And so suddenly that they became really, really close that they wanted to get a job. And they applied for a job. And guess what? They were told to come together for an interview. Amen. So they're both heading to the job site for an interview. Amen. But I got to kind of mix the story a little bit. And they're going and they're talking. But one of them, you know, sometimes life, when you're trying to struggle, you kind of become selfish, think about yourself sometimes. So one of the guys, we, we, let's give him a nice name. Let me give him a nice name. One of them name was Love and the other name was Kindness. <laughs> this nickname, all right? <laughs> so Love and Kindness is going together on this thing, on this journey. And as they were going, some of the other, some argument came and, boy, Kindness get vexed and he slap love. <laughs> love gets one smack. Love got shocked. <laughs> Look at kindness. And he decided to walk on. But before he walked on, he stopped and he saw some sand in the ground. He says, he wrote on the sand, today my best friend slapped me. <laughs> and he makes sure kindness see it. And he, <laughs> and he walks on. And as you were walking on, and he's trying to make, you know, when you somebody, you don't want to walk with them, you kind of walk quickly. And some husband and wife had a problem, they just walk past, fast. <laughs> the stores and whatever. <laughs> Amen, I'm not going to go there. But the point is, he's walking and putting a distance, only to realize that he, he tripped and he fell and found himself in difficulty on the ground. And while he was on the ground struggling, guess who came behind, walking? Kindness. Kindness stopped and said, what's wrong? He says, I hit my knees and he's hurting there. And Kindness stopped, picked him up, fixed him back up, and he felt good. And then they're walking together. And as they go a little further, he saw a rock and he took something. He said, could I stop here? And he wrote on the, the rock, today my best friend helped me. Amen. Really and truly, the, his friend says, hey, I noticed that when I... Smack you, you wrote something on the sand, and now I notice that I do the kindness way, and you wrote it on the rock. Why is that? And he smiled and said, You see that in the sand? That will blow away. Yeah. But on the rock, it's going to stay. Yeah. The hand and say, Hallelujah. How many realize that you got to just forgive and move on? Come on, wave your hand. Watch your neighbor and say, Write it in the sand if they hurt you. Write it in the sand if they talk you bad. Write it in the sand if they are talking you bad. But whatever kindness God do for you, write it on the stone. Amen. Amen. Come and lift your hands and say hallelujah. Are we being blessed here this morning? There is power in forgiveness. A forgiven man don't have a problem forgiving others. I meet a guy. And he's just telling me who do him this. And, and he said, you don't know. You don't know what to do me. And I asked him, I said, do you like to drink poison? He said, what? He says, of course not. I said, really? He said, I said, would, if I give you poison, would you, no, I wouldn't drink that. I will kill. I said, well, listen, gossiping, bitterness is poison to your soul. And nobody's giving you. You are drinking it yourself. You cannot poison your soul and want to live for Jesus. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. You got to drink from the living water. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody getting a message here this morning? I'm trying to be as real as possible. Hallelujah. Watch your neighbor say, write it on the sand. Now, you know what I found out, Pastor? Some people just write the wrong thing in the rock and they write the wrong thing on the sand. Sometimes you do good for people, they write it in the sand. Have you ever noticed that? After you're done, but on the wrong that you do, you do 99 good, they write it in the sand. You do one wrong, they write it on stone. <laughs> Are we talking here this morning? <laughs> Amen. But I'm so glad 
The blood, there is power in another thing. Not in the blood of bulls and goat, but there's power in the blood. Amen. Amen. I need to know what my time is because I put us. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Guys, there's power in stopping. <laughs> At the traffic light. Amen. <laughs> so I'm going to stop. I love you all. I hope you understand. You don't need to get power on the outside. All you need is on the inside of you. Make that discovery and you'll be on the road to recovery. God bless you, everyone. Let's all stand in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.